Hey, good morning. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you, or at least I can. <laughs> okay, good. So just like before, we'll give everybody a couple minutes to get in here, and then we will start our big example today. Sounds good? You're muted. Thanks, Colby. <laughs> So I popped into your rooms and it looked like you guys were doing awesome. So now I'm gonna share my screen and just see if we were um, all on the same page. And also I'll upload this solutions version of our notes as well to our Canvas page. So, um, and Hannah, I'll also upload it to your uh, Canvas page as well. Cool. So first, our null and alternative hypothesis is that we think these two variables are independent. So the variables that we're talking about, we can find those right here. So age group and shipping method are independent. That's the null hypothesis. That's the thing that we're going to assume is true throughout the whole study. The alternative is that they are not independent. Okay, so they're could potentially be a relationship between shipping method and age group. So maybe um, younger people use UPS while older people use FedEx, et cetera. Um, I love this example. I pulled it from the textbook, but I like how there's people who are like, not sure what shipping method I use. Like I also <laughs> walk through my life with my eyes closed, so <laughs> whatever. Um, to find the degrees of freedom by hand, you need to take the total number of rows. Remember, we have to exclude the actual total row. Subtract one, and then take the number of columns and subtract one. Again, ignoring the total columns because those aren't the amount of um, categories in our categorical data or the number of characteristics in our categorical data. So we'd have five minus one times three minus one, and we should get eight. Now, for number three, we want to find the expected value of the cell, 18 to 34, and not sure, and we want to do that by hand. So each of these little boxes that you see in the middle here for our data, that would be a cell. <clears throat> so what we want to do is that we want to find the expected value for this cell right here. So to do that by hand, we're going to take the row total, which is 13, multiply it by the column total, which is 165, and then we want to divide it by the overall total, which is this 500. So when we do that, I got approximately about 4.3. Now you can definitely do all of those cells by hand. It gets a little exhaustive and a little bit tedious. So what we want to do is that we want to use technology to do this for us. So if we go to that calculator that we have right here and you extend so that you have the correct number of columns and the correct number of rows, you enter in the data here. Just a quick little, if you're not um, used to technology, you can use the tab button and it goes a little bit faster. Also, when I was in school, I um, always had a study buddy next to me, so I'd have them read me off the numbers and then I would enter them. This isn't that much data, but just so you guys know, that's totally fair game to do. I did it all the time. After you enter those all in and you hit enter, you'll get this slew of expected values right down here. Again, remember, we don't want to include the total rows and columns on this. So I took those expected values and I rounded them just to the first decimal place. Be careful when you're doing the homework. Pay attention to what decimal the homework wants it at. Uh, any questions so far? Um, I kind of got slightly different numbers on my calculator than you did on yours. Okay. Um, I'll pull it up right now. Like I got for the first one, I got um, 80, no, I lied. 80.85 instead of. Hmm. And I might have done something wrong. You might have. Oh, I see what I did. Hold on. It was definitely my error. Okay, yep. I'm not sure because sometimes I put the data in wrong. 
No, no, no. I accidentally put 25 instead of 24 in the very, very center one. Oh. So totally fine. I'll fix it before I post these on um, Canvas, okay? All right. Thank you for pointing that out. Let me just real quick. Boom. Okay. So <clears throat> now for the fifth problem, it wants us to check the conditions of that chi-square are met. So the two conditions for the chi-square is that it needs to be random. Remember, randomness reduces bias, so we're more likely to get an accurate read. So did we hit the condition of random? We did, because if we reread the setup of the question, it says that it was randomly sampled. So that's good enough for us at this point. Condition two asks, is each expected count greater than five? So what that means is that if you go and you look at each of these expected counts, we need every single one to be greater than five. That's going to ensure that our sample is actually large enough. Now, there's two ways that you can do this. You can look at each expected count, and right here we see that 4.3 is less than five, so we fail to meet that condition. The other cool thing about that website that you're all using is that it actually gives you a warning. It says, warning, actual value less than five. Results are not reliable. So remember, we don't care if the observed count is less than five. The expected count, if that's less than five, then we're in trouble. So even though we didn't meet the conditions, we're just going to go forward to make sure that we know how to find the chi-square and the p-value. So our chi-square value in this case is going to be roughly 16.3-ish if you round. Maddie, is that what you got as well? Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right, and then our p-value is going to be 0 0.0383. About again, I'm rounding. All right, last but not least, we are ready to state our conclusion. So, if you said something around these lines, you're doing perfectly fine. This is kind of a tricky question because of the situation, but here's what I would say I would say, typically, since our p value is less than our significance level. So that is that 0 0.383 is less than 0 0.05. We would reject our null hypothesis. So typically, since our p-value is less than our significance level, we would reject our null hypothesis. However, because the conditions were not met, we cannot state a satisfactory conclusion. So in this case, what that means is that we don't have a poor study. What we have is that we have a poor sample size. So what we'd like to do to rectify this is that we would like to do this whole sample again, but maybe increase it from 500, maybe to 800, or maybe to 1,000. And then hopefully increasing that sample size will get us larger expected values so that we can actually run a chi-square and have a um, legitimate conclusion based off of a p-value in our chi-square. All right, so that is the end of the big example. I'm gonna pause here, so if you're still writing, you can finish writing. And also, um, does anybody have any thoughts or questions on that example? Nope, looking good. All right, so here is the plan, is that, yes, um tomorrow we're going to do our little homework thing so um tomorrow's friday so from 8 to 8 50 we'll work on this homework 
Um, I haven't decided if we're going to have class next Monday or Tuesday. I'll probably send you guys out a little survey and just see how you feel about that. Um, we only have one more unit left in this class. So, um, and that unit can go, we should be able to get it done in four days anyway. Um, yeah, so I'll correct my expected counts, get this uploaded to Canvas and as well as the video later today. But other than that, we are all done. So I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye, guys. Then real quick.